that. And what exactly is a meso mesophile culture? Exactly, is a culture that that likes um, body temperature, that likes to be around 88 to 90 degrees. Uh, uh, hold on, yeah, that. Yeah, hold, yeah. hold that thought. Sheriff Stephen Jay here, and I'm at the State of Maine Cheese Company. And with me, I have head cheesemaker David. And David is going to show us today how you make cheese. Isn't that right, David? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, well, how do you make the cheese? And we have a chart here with some yeah. pictures on yeah. it from yeah. beginning to end. Yeah. But uh, how do you start making the cheese? As far as what's the first step that uh, is in the process? You start by bringing milk from a local farm. It comes out of the back of a tractor trailer. And we pump that from the tractor trailer using a pump outside. We pump it that through pipes. And it comes into our holding tank that's inside the building. How big is a holding tank? The holding tank's quite large. It can hold um, the whole back half of the tanker truck, actually. Really? In that tank, yeah. That is yeah. pretty large. Yes, that is pretty large. So, okay, now you have the milk yeah. and it's in the uh, tank. Yeah, we're going to take that milk and, and we're going to run through a pasteurizer. And the pasteurizer, right. what that does, it takes the milk and, and it cleans it up for us. It takes out all the, uh, all the bad bacteria out of, out of the milk. And so it's pasteurizing, we'd open the valve up on the tank, and that brings the milk into our pasteurizer. Okay. The pasteurizer has its own tank, we call it a balance tank, that allows the milk to have a place to be sucked from. The milk is sucked up into the pasteurizer, we check the temperatures, make sure that the milk is at the proper temperature, and then from there, the milk is sent down another pipe, and we open up a valve, that empties that milk down in, into our vat we're making cheese from. I see. So you have to make sure that the pasteurizer is at a certain temperature right. to make sure it kills the bacteria? Right. Yes. Now, does it kill all of the bacteria? No, it, it, it only kills most of them. Actually, mainly the pathogens, the ones that make people sick, are removed from oh, I see. pasteurization. Well, that's the ones you want, that's to, one we want, we want, we want to remove. Right. Okay, great. Okay, so now you've had your pasteurizer, you've yep. pasteurized it, and yep. now the milk has gone it, through the pasteurizer, yep. and now it's in a vat. Right. Now, at the vat, what are you doing at in, the vat? In the vat, we want to make sure that the milk's at the right temperature. So we may have to adjust it if it isn't quite high enough or low enough, as the case may be. So after the milk's adjusted to the right temperature, we're going to add good bacteria back into it. Okay. Bacteria that we know, know know is good and makes excellent cheese. Now, what bacteria do you use? Can you tell me? Is that a secret? No, no, no. It, we, we use a, a standard mesophile culture. It's called a, we actually call it a starter. It, it likes warm temperatures. Is all mesophile means. Just, okay. It, it's it's likes you know body temperature. So you so put that, the bacteria in. Now, yeah. what does the bacteria do to yeah. the milk? And what it does is is it eats the lactose, the milk sugars that are in the milk. It makes a lactic acid. The lactic acid helps break down the milk. You know, helps make make the milk turn in from from milk into cheese. Basically, is what ends up happening. Now, I heard there's another ingredient that yes. can be used right. or not used, but yeah. most of the time it is used. Right. And it's called rennet. It's called rennet. Um, the vegetable rennet is derived from a fungus, um, a mold. All right. So you're using a vegetable rennet. Yes. And there are two types. Right. A animal and vegetable. Animal and vegetable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I knew that I didn't know. Yeah. But you're using the vegetable. We're using kind. the vegetable. Okay. okay. So now how long does that have to sit in the vat? From this stage here, with the culture and the rennet is about an hour and a half for cheddar. And what does the rennet exactly do? It acts as a catalyst. It, it, it speeds things up. The bacteria would work on their own, but this helps helps them along. It's kind of like a helper. So I know it's an en enzyme. Yeah. So this enzyme basically uh, makes the bacteria do its job quicker. Yes, exactly. All right. Yeah. So we're at the vat. You put in the um, bacteria and you put in the rennet. Yes. And you're mixing it up. Yeah. Well, after we add the rennet, we're waiting for it to just set undisturbed until it turns like a jello. Push down on it and it will it will kind of give back, you know, it will push back. Oh, I see. Thank you. And we're going to take that, what's called the coagulum. A fancy word, right now. Yeah, and and we're, we're going to take that and we're going we're to run some wire knives through that. And, and those wire knives will, will, will cut the cut that into curds and whey. The curds being the solids and the whey being being a liquid. So you say knives, and there's knives. more than one knife. Well, well, yeah, they're, they're just strings basically inside, inside of a frame, and, and, you, and you run those through. But there's um, different types. There's different types. Yes, um, there's different different widths of them. There's different shapes. I there's see. all kinds of. And how many knives. do you use for your? We cheese? use two. We use we use a, a, a vertical one, and then we use a horizontal. Oh. Okay. And we, we end up with those little cubes, basically, and those cubes are curd. All right. And, and those are suspended in a green liquid, which is whey. So curds and whey. So basically, you're you're adding this bacteria yeah. and this rennet, yeah. and you're making milk. Separate. Yeah. So now you have curds, yeah. which is a solid, yeah. and now you have liquid, right, which is which whey. Is yeah. whey. Yeah. yeah. No way. Yeah, that's whey. <laughs> okay. All right. Now yeah. what are we doing? What we're doing is we're taking, we're heating up the, the curd. 
so that now we, sh and we shrinks it, you know, because um, right now it's very soft and fragile. Okay. So we want to heat it up so it makes it firmer. So we're going to heat that curd and, until it, it gets to the right consistency of firmness that we want. Okay. And once it reaches that point, then we're going to stir it for a little while longer because mm -hmm. the bacteria is still alive in there and want those right. bacteria to continue to, to grow and develop and excrete more acid. So you killed some of the bacteria, right. but now you want the bacteria yeah, want it to, to recover so it's it not growing again. Yeah. Okay. And, and, yes. <laughs> All right, I think yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Continue. Okay, so once we get the right texture, you know, the right amount of time stirring, we're going to drain all the way off of it. All right, so and, you're going to let it out of the so tank. So we take all that liquid out. Okay. And the liquid is going to be pumped out back to another truck we have out back, where it's collected by pig farmers who, oh. who end up using it for their animals. So, uh, okay, so basically you got milk from cows from yep. the farm. Yep. Now we're going to turn around and give them and, and give the way so the they, can yeah. they can feed their livestock. Feed the livestock. All right, got any curves? How much curves do you get from how much milk? I mean, uh, the tank over there looks rather large. Yeah, it's not much. For every 100 pounds of milk, you get one pound of curd. <laughs> and now, once we get all the whey drained off, we're going to take all the curd, we're going to smooth it out, make it nice and pretty. Okay. And then we're going to take what's called the curd rate, Mm -hmm. special tool and we're going to use that it was called packing which is actually involved making a trench between the two sections of, of curd I so see. to push those curds off to the side once we form those in, into nice two little nice slabs sort of on either side we're going to take another curd knife we're going to cut the other way and, and make those curds into slabs okay. and, and those slabs will gradually be turned and then piled on top of each other to develop more acid to squeeze out more of the liquid whey that's still remaining I see. And at the same time, develop the texture that, that cheddar um, has. Now, how many times do you turn this? We'll stack them three different times. Okay. Clipping them once, and we'll stack them two high, then three high. Okay. And finally, when we're done with that, then we're going to take those slabs. We're going to run those through a curd mill, a special machine that will cut them back in, into little, little um, sizes of curds, but yay big. Okay. Those curds are, are going to be salted. The salt will act as a preservative by slowing things down. And, and salt also acts as, as a flavoring agent, it makes things taste better. And once the salt is, is completely dissolved in, into the curd and it's completely absorbed, then we'll take those curds and we're going to take, take them by a bucket and, and we're going to carry them over to um, square forms that we have. And, and we're going to add, add them into those to make 40 pound blocks. 40 pound blocks? 40 pound blocks. So that's why you carry it yeah. in buckets yeah. over yeah. to the yeah. form. Right. Okay, but, so but also I'm going to do some five-pound wheels. Oh, and the five-pound wheels because they're much smaller, are much easier to carry the forms to the vat rather than carried by bucket. So I'll bring those five-pound forms over to the vat. I'll fill the forms there. So from the bucket, yeah. you take the curds over to the square forty-pound forms, which, which are lined with cheesecloth. Oh, so you have cheesecloth yeah, cheese that there. lines the yeah, yeah. The, okay. the cheesecloth allows the way to escape from the from the forms. Basically, it holds the curd in, allows the way to, to to escape. And you put the curds in there. Yeah. Now I'm going to press the cheese. Okay. And to press them for the forty-pound blocks, we're going to turn them on their sides. And, and then we're going to actually compress them with a hydraulic press. We're going to I, I actually use a press that actually presses it all, all the way out of the blocks. And uh, so it presses them and then it holds them, I, I would think, at it, a certain... It holds them overnight. So the following morning, we'll actually remove the forms from the blocks. And, and then and, you have your cheese, a block right. of cheese. Yeah, well, that's and that block of cheese will wrap in a plastic wrap. We'll, we'll suck all the air out of it. And that goes in, into cold storage until it's ready to be sold. So you have the square form, yep. and you put it in the press, and yep. the press squeezes it, yep. and it all the, the yep. rest of the way, the yep. liquid, yep. comes out. So you get yep. all that way out. Yep. And the same with the round one. Uh, no, actually, the round cheese, we, we use a, what we call bungee press. It's actually what you call bungee cords. We'll stretch over top of them and use those to provide continuous pressure on them overnight. When I remove those from the forms, those I, I, I just really call bandaging, which actually involves taking a, a cloth cheesecloth, soaking it in butter, and then applying that oh. outside the cheese. And that will become its own wrapper for it that will stay that way for the life of the cheese. Get me hungry. <laughs> so, um, well, let's go about, well, not jack cheese, let's talk about okay. the jack yeah. cheese, because my favorite cheese is pepper jack. Right. I yeah. love yeah. pepper yeah. jack. Yeah. Yeah. And so, when you make the pepper jack cheese, is it pretty much the same process up to a point? Up to a point, it is. Um, it's, up, it's the same process up to the point of, of just beyond cooking. Okay. After curd is cooked, it, instead of trying to encourage acid like they do with cheddar, We'll drain about half of the way off of the jack, and then we'll add cold water back into that. And what that's trying to do is we're, is we're trying to slow the bacteria down. So it's point. the same little vat? Like no, no, it's a larger vat. Yeah, yeah because um, we saw a lot more jack than we saw cheddar. Is, is oh, that what makes it down to. Okay, so there that's you why, go. That's why we... So you make it... Yeah. In, okay. Yeah. So you make all this jack cheese. Yeah. What's the difference between making the cheddar and the jack? What are you doing differently? We're adding cold water into the vat, 
and, and that's that's cooling the curd down. And, and when, when you cool the curd down, it slows all the bacteria down because we're taking away its its food source, lactose. I see. I see. You know, so it's taking away sugar from it, and we're cooling it off. And so when you cool cool bacteria down, they slow down again. Instead of the you know putting the trench down the center and making the slabs and turning the slabs like do a cheddar, we're actually keeping all the curd in motion all the time. We're not allowing it to stick together. We're actually keeping it keeping it constantly in motion. And, and that, you know, um, is, is what we call stirred curd method. We're keeping it, we're stirring the curd. And the, the cheddar has kind of like, you know, it ends up being sort of um, elongated square shapes. The, the, the jack curd looks more almost like popcorn. Popcorn? Yes. Oh, I like popcorn. <laughs> Cheese and popcorn. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah Cheese yeah. flavored popcorn. I love that. <laughs> So okay, so then you get your your curds because curds makes all cheese. Yeah. And then how do you make the pepper jack or the jalapeno? I call yeah. it jalapeno. Yeah. Pepper, pepper jack, jack. Same, same thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. But, but we take the curd from the bat, like we do, like we do with the cheddar. We move it, put it into into a form, and then we we add our flavoring in the form. We typically, we mix it right in by hand. So your curd is in the form. Mm -hmm. And then you put in your add your jalapeno, yep. and, then and then we you mix, mix it all and up. Mix it in. Yep. And it's the same thing. And then yep. that has a, 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 a cheesecloth. Yeah, it has a cheesecloth line. And you wrap and it. So we'll wrap it and press and it. Press it. Hydraulic press, same as the cheddar. And the next day, next you know, day it, it will be it will come forty pound block of yeah. jalapeno, and, 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 and it will be wrapped in plastic. Yeah. Same thing. It will, Pepper it will, jack. It will go back to, to cold storage until it's ready to be sold. Wow. So now you have a forty pound block of pepper jack. Mm -hmm. I love pepper yeah. jack. That's great. Yeah. You see that, everybody? Anybody can make cheese. David makes it all the time. Isn't that right, David? No, no. I, I just manage the bacteria. They, they, they do all the work for me. So I guess you can call me a lactic fermentation control specialist. <laughs> okay. Uh, a bacteria manager. David's a bacteria manager. Say some bacteria names. Oh, like like the bacillus. What uh -huh. you got? Like there you the go. What you know? What coxi, else? Oh, the coxi. Uh, yeah, there's all yeah. kinds of bacteria. Buy it in the store. <laughs> but you don't need to know, need to know the names to make the cheese. You can, all you need is a good recipe and, well. and, and you know, just a little bit of time and practice. You, you, you can, anybody can make it. You're doing a great job. You've made Thank me you. hungry. Yeah. So I'm going to go get me some, uh, well, I'm going to get some pepper jack, obviously, but I'm going to get some cheddar as yeah. well, yeah. and um, we're going to try it out. Okay. All right, everybody, I'll, I'll, I'm going back. Back to the house, and uh, we'll meet you there. And thank you very much, David, okay. for sharing all that with thank us, you. and that you take care. Yeah. And I'll see you again one day. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. You want to have some cheese? I'm going to have sure. some cheese. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're having cheese. <laughs>